Hi, this is Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. Today is Tuesday, June 4th. Um, this episode is called Meet Me in St. Louis because it will primarily be about my St. Louis trip. Um, there are kitties today, so hopefully there won't be a lot of bumping around, but no guarantees. They just came home yesterday and they're still a little clingy. Um, I have... I had a really bad allergy attack, and actually for a good portion of the trip, I sounded extremely squeaky. I sounded a bit like Peter Brady um, in the Time for Change song that the Brady Bunch did. If you don't know what that is, uh, you can Google Peter Brady Time for Change, and you'll find it, and you'll find a YouTube video. Hi. Um, I've been struggling with how to uh, go about this because I have a lot of pictures, but when I post pictures, that means I'm not talking to you. Um, there is limited, uh, fiber content, but there is, there is some, and so we're just going to kind of see how this goes, and I'm going to talk about things and talk about things chronologically in the order that they happened. Let me get down to these. All right, before we left on the trip, I did finish ply, uh, plying my Rogue Adventures uh, yarn. I don't remember what this is made of. This stash page is linked on the show notes. Um, I didn't get as much yardage as I was hoping, considering that it is... It's not super thick, it's, but it came out... I was hoping for a fingering, and in some places it's a fingering, some places it is more of a uh, sport DK. But um, if I were to ball this up, you would see that it goes from purple to, to, to red to orange, and then kind of an orangey yellow. Um, when I soaked this, there was a lot of red dye, and... Um, the red dye went into my yellow. So instead of having yellow, I now have yellow orange. So, but um, it was a gradient, and I, what I did is I split in half and spun one in from the purple, red, orange, and then the other, I continued on the same bobbin, orange, red, purple. Um, so if I were to, um, ball this up in a, in a cake, you would actually see it, the colors change. Uh, purple, red, orange, red, purple. So, but I still, I I like how it came out, I just wish I had gotten a little more yardage. So, and I uh, chain plied it to keep the colors together. So that was before the trip. Now, I had told you guys that uh, best friend had said that he would drive so that I could power through my socks. Well, apparently I have way overestimated my ability to power through socks. Um, on the drive, I managed to, these have like a really long tail. The cats tried to help me this morning. So on the drive to St. Louis, I managed to get most of the way to where I could start the gusset increases. So, and then part of this is because I'm doing two at a time, and I think I, I just totally overestimated my confidence. Um, also, my shoulder was really bothering me, and I still wasn't feeling real good, so that didn't help. But I got to where I could do the increases. Um, during part of the trip, I started the increases. I finished the increases when we were almost home. Uh, actually, I finished them um, before we got to uh, where my mom and, uh, and son live because I was picking up the kitties. And I finished one heel flap. Um, the other heel flap is partially finished. Somewhere, be somewhere yesterday, I finished one heel flap and started the other one. Um, I'm hoping they're going to fit the heel flap. I, what I did is I used... Um, this is the Labor and Sock Pattern by Minty Fresh, but the heel is actually 
the, the gusset and the heel flap are from Wendy Johnson's Socks from the Toe Up. And I used her free template that is on her website. Um, I will try to re I will remember to add that to the show notes because that part's not on the show notes. Um, but anyway, so I, I he held his he, he held to his promise and he drove the entire way. Um, and I knit, but there was just no possible way those were getting done before I went to bed on May 31st. So, June 1st, I locked the May Emerald Birthstone along thread, and I opened up the June thread. Um, so, those didn't get done. I, I'm still going to work on them, so they will get done eventually. Um... To anybody just joining, we are doing a what we call a birthstone along throughout 2013, where each month we have something, we have a color that we're aiming for based on the birthstone for that month. So last month, May, was emerald green. So these socks have a lot of green in them. Um, this colorway is called I Fought the Law. It's the proceeds go to knitting behind bars, um, which is a program to teach prisoners how to knit. So I was going to use those. I also had a shawl, and I spun this yarn, so which is very green. So I had emerald projects. Just that one's not getting finished. Um, so this coming month is June. Ooh, I need to draw for the prize for May. All right, I'm going to pause for a second here. All right, I had forgotten to get the prize stuff ready. Um, this month's, the May prize is coming from my friend Victoria Blue, and it is for a pattern of the winner's choice that is a paid Ravelry download pattern that is $10 or less. So as long as you can go to Ravelry and it has a, it has a buy now button, that's, you can ask for that pattern as long as it's $10 or less. So I looked and we had uh, 53 was the last number posted. Number one, of course, is my explanation for the month. So we have 2 through 53. Oh, early number. Number is 3. I'm never on the right page. So I'm going to the first page. And post number three is from M.I. Yes, I Am, uh, who posted, she was making um, washcloths, I believe, in a very pretty emerald green. So that is Suzanne. So her, her Ravelry name is M.I. Yes, I Am. Suzanne, um, let me know you saw this and you can get in touch with Victoria. Her Ravelry name is Victoria Blue. I will let her know you're coming. And you can decide amongst yourselves what pattern you're going to pick. And please let us know. It's just fun. I'm sorry if you can hear the cats hissing. They're fussing. All right. Um, June is Pearl. And for the month... For the Pearl Month, we are doing natural colors. Um, white, off-white, brown, gray, black. Um, so I'm going to see how uh, crazy I am. I have this lovely Merino Yak and Silk Blend that Tiff got me for Christmas. Um, she got it from her local, from a local yarn shop called the Spinster in Kingman, Arizona. Um, it's a half pound. And it is this lovely silvery gray. Um, I am hoping to do something fun with it and end up blending it with this alpaca merino silk. 
Um, this is from Wonder Why Alpaca Farm. I bought this at the SSK retreat. And it is uh, browns, a little bit of silver, and a, and a reddish tone. So, and this is a um, roving. It's very similar to the, to the blue alpaca I spun uh, in uh, March's aquamarine month. So, those are both natural colors. I have two of these. So that means I have 16 ounces total. Um, and I'm going to do something for myself. If I get, for every four, because most skeins tend to be about four ounces, for every four ounces I get done, I'm counting it as one item. But my hope is that with Tour de Fleece, I will actually get all of it done. Um, we aren't officially doing Tour de Fleece, but I like to see if I can um, spin every day. So, and I don't know the dates exactly for Tour de Fleece. I should look them up. Um, the last item of knitting, ah, I did work on my twitchy socks. Um, for anybody not knowing, twitchy socks are socks I keep in my purse that keep me from twitching at movies, ball games, waiting rooms. Um, so called because, uh, best friend one time was telling me to make sure I got my knitting ready for the movies because otherwise I get twitchy. So whatever my random sock is in my purse is the current twitchy socks. So this is um, Knit Picks Felici in the Abracadabra colorway. I'm knitting it at a much looser gauge than I normally do. I don't remember why either. It's a slightly thicker yarn, so it's working out okay. So that is it for works in progress and spinning and the birthstone log. Everything from this point forward will be purely the St. Louis trip. So if you don't want to know about the St. Louis trip, you can go ahead, leave. I won't be offended. Um, if you do, we're going to figure that out now. So I'm going to pause this and then we're going to start with Friday. All right, so Friday, um, we got up at probably about seven o'clock. We were already packed. We had decided we were not, um, we were not setting an alarm or anything. We were just going to get up when we got up. Um, but, uh, so we got up about seven o'clock. We weren't in a rush. But the first thing we did was we went to Dunkin' Donuts, got breakfast sandwiches and uh, coffee. And best friend was very excited because as we walked in, a woman, a perfect stranger, said, said, hey, I'm not going to be able to use this coupon. Do you want it? And it was a coupon for a free donut if you bought coffee. And we were there for coffee. So I think, I don't know if he got a sandwich or not. Maybe it was just me because I, I, cause he got donuts. So we stopped at Dunkin' Donuts, and then we immediately started driving. Um, and as I said, I was working on my labor and socks the entire time. Um, my head was very stuffed up for this part of the trip. Um, it had been stuffed up for a few days. I had actually gone to the doctor um, Tuesday, and she said, it's allergies, you're just going to have to wait it out. Um, I couldn't hear out of my ears. It was... It was not a great start for me for how I was feeling. Um, eventually, throughout the weekend, I started feeling better, but then I couldn't talk, and I was just squeaky. But um, on the way, we stopped at a Steak and Shake, which I've never been to a Steak and Shake. It was okay. I mean, I had a burger. I had a shake. The shake was good. And then about 2.30, we pulled into St. Louis, and we got our first view of a couple of the landmarks. So what you saw was the arch. Now I took it from the car, which is why you have a power station with it. <laughs> and uh, 
Then uh, a picture of Bush Stadium as we went by from the freeway. And the first stop we made before we even went to the hotel was Saint was the uh, Union Station in downtown St. Louis. Um, it's an old, well, it's an old station for trains, but it's now turned into almost like a mall. And best friend wanted to go there because there were some places that had Cardinals gear. Um, so, and he had been kind of telling me I really needed something red, something Cardinals. And when I looked in all of my clothes, once upon a time I had tons of red clothes. Um, but when I looked through all my clothes, I had a red cami that I could wear under another shirt. Or I have this red t-shirt that's like raggedy and I don't wear it outside the house. Um, so I was kind of looking when we went to the Cardinal store for um, a shirt, but they were the only one I liked was forty dollars, and I wasn't spending forty dollars. Um, I don't. I'm not a huge baseball fan. I like going to baseball games. I enjoy being at the game. I'm not a huge fan. I will go to Brewers games here in Milwaukee because I enjoy the experience, not because I follow the team. But we were going to a Cardinals game on Saturday, so you want. So we had looked for shirts, but he agreed they were too expensive. Um, but he found a shirt for himself that was on sale, and we found a really cool sign. Um, so that was fine. And we went to the hotel. When we got to the hotel, we realized that he actually grabbed the wrong size shirt. He, I don't know what he did, but he needed an extra large. He's got very broad shoulders. And instead, he grabbed a medium, which in no way will fit him. So we were going to have to go back. But we got to our room. We... Um, our room was a king size executive room, so it had a sofa bed, uh, arm or uh, armchair, a nice desk area with a comfy desk chair, and then king size bed. It was a very nice room. Um, we in enjoyed the hotel in general. Uh, we went, then we decided to walk to the St. Louis City Museum. Now here. I'm going to have trouble describing this. And I actually have already in the show notes posted a YouTube video that somebody did that's about eight minutes long about the city museum. It's hard to describe. Um, it was designed by um, some artists. And they have things everywhere to climb on. There's plain fuselages and big giant um, what they call slinkies which are coils from old machines and uh, dragons designed out of old parts um, near where my parents live there's a a place called Delaney's where there's a guy who's an artist who makes uh, all sorts of artwork out of junk essentially you know storks out of old utensils and things that you know that you can put in your garden it was like that guy, a hundred times more. I mean, it was just huge. And you could, kids of all ages, grown-ups, could climb all over this. Um, so I'm going to post a couple pictures. And on the inside, there were different areas. And not all of it was like climbing and stuff. There was one area that was about old architecture of the cities. And it had pieces of architecture from old buildings that have been destroyed. Um, a lot of them destroyed in about the 1970s, but not all, um, that are from like the 1800s. Because St. Louis is a pretty old city. So the architecture was from St. Louis, uh, areas around St. Louis, uh, Oklahoma City, and Chicago were the primary areas. Um, and it was basically making you think about 
how we've lost this gorgeous architecture as people, you know, decide to demolish it and build something new. Um, so I have some pictures of some of the architecture pieces. All right, the building that the city museum is in is actually an old shoe factory. Um, so one of the things they did is they incorporated some of the old shoe slides, which were used for passing shoes down through the building, to make them into people slides. Um, one of them is several stories high. It's a twisty slide, and you can go down it. Um, so we went down that, and that actually led us to the caves section of the museum. And the, the caves are all man-made by the artist that bought the building. Um, so they're, they're kind of like real caves, but then they have like dinosaurs and um, just different things. And there's pl places you can climb through. Um, there's stairs. Everywhere you go, every time you think you're at a dead end, it's not really a dead end. Now, I will say that there are some areas where adults cannot fit. <laughs> there are some areas where, I mean, kids were crawling on their hands and knees to get through. Um, but the caves are really cool. And then when where we came out, there was a giant fish tank that had huge fish and turtles. Um, I'm going to post those right here. Alright, so, um, other parts of the museum included a uh, bug museum. We didn't go in there. There's also an aquarium that you can pay extra for, but we did not do that. There, and there is a rooftop area that has some more climbing features, a giant slide, um, a huge praying mantis. That also cost extra, so we didn't go up there. We actually went up because we didn't realize it was extra and the guy let us run across to get to the to the giant slide um, but we didn't really look at anything because we promised we would just go straight across um, there so the rooftop and the aquarium cost extra um, but they're open until midnight on Friday and Saturday hi Tiki you're not helping um, what else is there? Oh, there's a shoelace factory, which was closed when we went. Um, there is a, what they call a skateless park. It's a skate park. It's all the th items you'd see in a skate park, you know, a half pipe and whatever. I don't, I'm not a skateboarder. But you are, pl but the kids are playing on it without any sort of skates or skateboard. They're just running around playing, sliding down it. Um, there was a, uh, model railroad and you could also crawl under the tunnels and get basically inside the model railroad um, scene. There was a, a giant pipe organ. There was just there was a lot of different types of things. There was a whole area that was kind of a you could climb around but it was kind of like outdoor tree things. Um, it was it was a place to play. I mean and I liked watching Best Friend because he doesn't always play. So he, he relaxed and we played and that was fun. But then we got tired and uh, we decided to go back to the hotel. We were also hungry. So we decided to go back to the hotel. And we walked back to the hotel and we were going to take showers because we were slimy and gross from playing. And then we realized that there was a uh, tornado watch in St. Louis. So we had the TV on. As it turned out, it never came near where we were, but we were still, we had perfect timing for leaving the city museum because if we had left, if we had not left the city museum, um, we probably would have been stuck there because they weren't letting people out. Or if we had left earlier, we might have showered and then headed to dinner and then been stuck somewhere. As it was, we ended up just kind of stuck in the hotel, so we just stayed put. The only downside to all this is we had been planning to go out for dinner 
and we ended up having dinner in the restaurant in the hotel, which wouldn't have been bad, but the rooms at the hotel we were at were fabulous. The restaurant service, horrible. I mean, it. we never got all our food. Um, it took forever. There weren't actually that many people in the restaurant eating. We couldn't figure out what was taking so long. Um, it, it was... It was really bad. And I'm normally one of the most tolerant people you'll find. And it was bad. But during this whole time, I was talking to Allison, who is legal girl, um, because she's actually from St. Louis. And she was kind of telling me, like, what they were talking about on the maps because we don't live down there. We don't know the, the cities and whether or not we should be concerned or not. So we were kind of talking back and forth. And so after our really long, not good dinner. Actually, the food was good, just the service sucked. Um, we went to bed, <laughs> decided we would prepare for Saturday. Sorry, I'm also helping Tiff on the side a little bit. She said I could wait till I was done recording, but this is long, so I'm just trying to find her some info. So, Saturday. Saturday we decided to go down to the same restaurant to use, because they do a breakfast buffet. And we figured, it's a buffet. All we need to do is get our drinks and go up to the buffet. Should be fine. It was not fine. The buffet was mostly empty. There were now, instead of one server that there was on Friday night, who you could kind of forgive, they had like five servers and they still couldn't get us our drinks or make sure there was food. And it was chaotic and it was just as bad as Friday night and maybe even worse because of the fact that it didn't really seem like they had to do much. We really liked the rest of our hotel stay, but the restaurant was... Uh, best friend said he's actually going to be filling out a questionnaire and tell them what he thinks of their restaurant. Um, and the night before, we were also going, okay, well, there was the tornado and everything, so, you know, which is why we figured we'd give it a chance. But the fact that it was bad on Saturday, too, just, that was it. We were done. But anyway, so Saturday, uh, uh, Saturday, we ended up, I'm looking at my pictures for the day at the same time. One of the things I like about that day's app is it reminds me what was going on for that day. So we decided to uh, drive around. We had to go back to Union Station because you really are pesty today. We had to go back to Union Station because uh, best friend needed to replace the shirt that he got in the wrong size. When we went this time, we also went to another store that we had skipped the first time um, called Lids because by us, Lids is purely a hat store. Um, we went and it actually was hats, and lots of different kinds of hats and shirts and things. And they were having a buy one, get one half off sale. So we actually found me a shirt and a hat that he really liked. Um, so my shirt ended up being like $14. And so now I had a Cardinals shirt um, that I could wear to the game later that day. And then we decided to go to, since we were on, since we were driving around anyway, most of the places we went to we walked, but that, but we drove to Forest Park. Um, Forest Park is has all these different areas and it's really easy to get lost. We ended up, we were just trying to kind of go around and we uh, finally found the visitor center so we could pick up a map and figure out what in the world we were looking at and where we were going. And we were going to go see the Da Vinci exhibit on Saturday, but we got so entranced by Forest Park and all its different things that we ended up just spending a good chunk of time there. Um, some areas we drove to and some areas we walked to. Um, we, we took a, a walk around the uh, historical museum, which on one side 
is an old historical building, and on the opposite side is this new age modern building. Um, we went by the art museum, and that looks on, out onto this big lake with fountains. Um, and they were setting up, it looked like they were setting up for possibly a wedding. Uh, we went to, the, they have the World Fair Pavilion. Now the World Fair took place, I believe in 1904. And the pavilion was built from the proceeds from the from the World Fair. It wasn't built for the World's Fair. Um, at least, I think that's what I read. <laughs> I'm sure that's what I read. But I hate giving historical things when I have, don't have it in front of me. And the pavilion is gorgeous. It's way up high, and then it has uh, all these steps and, ca and levels, and at the bottom it's got uh, kind of a concrete waterfall area with fountains. So, and I'm going to put pictures of all of these. The, um, then we went to the Pagoda Circle, which there's a pagoda in the middle of all this water. As near as we can tell, you can only get to it by boat, but it doesn't look like anybody actually uses it right now. But it was pretty. And then we went to uh, an area called the Jewel Box, which is a giant greenhouse. They, um, some people were there taking wedding photos. So we were trying to stay out of their way. Um, we didn't we didn't go in because it was closed for the wedding party. But it, it's just huge and it supposedly it kind of glistens in the sun and, and looks really pretty when it, when it's all lit up. Um, presumably at night. We didn't see it then. And then as we were leaving, part of the forest park also connects to a zoo. And we didn't go to the zoo. Um, but on the way... <laughs> We actually went around the roundabout twice because it had this cool um, metal uh, artwork sculpture that was different animals that you would find in a zoo. And I was so excited about it that best friend took us another circle around so I could snap a picture from the car. But we also weren't trying, we were trying not to bother people too much. So let me post the forest park pictures. So we, um, at that point, we decided that it was too late to go to the Da Vinci exhibit um, and still have time to then go to meet Allison and her mom for dinner and go to the game. So we decided to go back to the hotel, um, just chill out for a little while, and... Um, uh, we read about some of the things we saw. We looked at maps. <laughs> we did a lot of looking at maps. Partially because we were walking places, so we were trying to figure out where we were going. Um, changed clothes, so I switched to my cardinal shirt. And um, then we, as we were walking, we passed a uh, United States federal courthouse. It's just huge, so I just took a picture of it. Um, and then we met Allison and her mom at Joe Buck's restaurant, which I've linked in the show notes already. Um, they do kind of barbecue burgers. Um, I had a 
barbecue rib meat on a bun, like a sandwich. It was very tasty. I ended up not eating all of the bun, but it was very good. Um, and that was only two blocks from the Cardinals game. So we had dinner. Uh, best friend and Allison got along because they and, and her mom because they were all talking Cardinals and baseball and stuff. Uh, I didn't get a picture with Allison. I should have. <laughs> it didn't even occur to me till later. Um, but then we all walked down to the game, but their seats, and they were in different seats, a uh, different section than we were. So then we went to the game. Um, Cardinals won. Yay. <laughs> they had actually had to play a doubleheader because of those storms that were on Friday night. They had canceled that game, so they moved that game to... 12.15 on Saturday, so Saturday afternoon, and then our game was a 6.15 game. And I guess it was the first double header they've played in St. Louis, I don't know, since the 70s or something like that. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but they won. Not only did they win, but they won very well. <laughs> so, And Best Friend was happy because I cheered in all the right places, and I worked on my twitchy socks, as you saw. And then they had fireworks after the game. Um, I'm actually going to post the fireworks at the very end because when I was filming it, um, I was trying to go, ooh, there, ooh, there, and I watched it, and if you get seasick, it probably is not a good film for you. So I'm going to put it at the very end, and you people can skip it if they want to. Um, and by that time, then we walked back to the hotel, and... That was late Saturday night, so that leads us to Sunday. So Sunday we decided to do, <laughs> we needed to get all the rest of the things done that we really wanted to see. Um, we weren't expecting to be a full day, but some of the things ended up taking more time than we expected, so it ended up being a much fuller day than we had planned. But we started out by going to breakfast at a restaurant called Rooster, and they make crepes. And, um, that's their main dish. And you can also get any of the crepes as an omelet. So best friend got one that had uh, German sausage and I don't know what else. But he got it as an omelet. I got something I had never heard of. Um, and my dad always liked trying different foods, especially if it was something that you couldn't get anywhere else. I mean, I could have got regular French toast and been perfectly happy. But I picked uh, bacon, cheddar, Asiago French toast. And it was very good. I am very glad I tried it. So I'm going to post a picture here just so you can see. So, um, then we went on our first stop, which was, we actually walked to the rooster and then came back, got our stuff, all that kind of fun thing. Um, we went to the botanical gardens, and we actually drove to the botanical gardens, um, and we ended up spending about two and a half hours at the botanical gardens. We started out taking the tram, which kind of gives you a high-level overview of the, of the park, uh, letting you kind of see where everything was, which ended up being very helpful. Um, and telling a little bit about the stories. Somebody's trying to play in my alpaca. Um, the park was founded by Harry Shaw on some land that he had because he wanted to kind of preserve it as a garden and show people. Um, so there's different sections of it. There's a Chinese garden, a Japanese garden, um, there's an area where they farm uh, fruits and berries. There's a home gardening section where you can kind of learn things that you can do for your own garden. There's an English garden, there's a maze. Um, there's also a house called the Tower Grove House, I believe, and that was one of two homes. And then, then that one had been in that location. Um, the east wing has been redone, but 
that had been there. There's another house that originally was five miles away, and he had requested that it be moved brick by brick to be next to the first house so that um, they would both be within the botanical gardens. Um, so I'm going to try... I have a lot of pictures from the botanical gardens. Um, I'm going to start out showing you an area that it's... I don't know what you call it. It's almost like a pagoda, but inside is a, is a, as a statue sort of, of, a, of Harry Shaw lying down. It's his deathbed, and he truly is buried underneath it. Um, the next set of pictures is Tower Grove House. Um, one of the rooms of furniture, which I actually just took a picture of because the couch looks like a couch mom just got for her dolls. Um, and then the, another picture is a lookout, and in the which is yellow, and in the background you'll see a red building, kind of this color red, and that's the second house that used to be five miles away, but it's actually now almost right next door. Alright, at the very beginning, you in the title, you actually saw a triangular fountain. Um, that is a decorative fountain in one area of the park. Um, we walked around that and through, and, and the main thing that Best Friend wanted to see was the Japanese garden. That's where he really wanted to go. And in the Japanese garden, um, there are Japanese maples and cherry trees, which I'm sure are beautiful in the spring. Um, Lots of stepping stone areas to walk, uh, ducks, <laughs> waterfalls, and um, koi. So, and you can feed the fish. And the fish are huge. I mean, huge. They're in this huge pond, so they have no constraints. And they have people feeding them all the time. I mean, they see you on the bridge and they start poking their heads up. I find them a little creepy, but they were there. So, I'm going to take show you some pictures from the Japanese garden. And we also saw the Chinese garden um, it has a beautiful entryway, and then along the walkway, there are these um, designs made out of different pebbles, and I took pictures of one of them that was a flower, but they had several. They had, uh, one was a stork, and one was a yin and yang, um, quite a variety. Um, and then there was a, I guess, a pagoda. I'm also sticking right here a couple other Random pictures, two random pictures um, from the garden, and then we leave the garden. One is these uh, benches that look like sheep, and of course I had to take pictures of those. And then the other one is a, is a it looks like a pepper plant of some kind, but it was used as ground cover, and I just thought it looked cool. Okay, so right after the Botanical Gardens, we went to a yarn store. The only yarn store we went on the entire trip. Um, and actually, only I went in. Um, it was called Notorious, in, and it's in St. Louis. I've linked it in the show notes, and I got two things. The first item, this is actually not anything special or local to there, but it's eight ounces um, of Blueface Leicester. 
in the Neapolitan colorway. You know, it's chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. Um, I just like the colors. I'm hoping that it's got a lot of white space. I am hoping that it is just as pretty when it is um, spun up. But I really, I like the colors that came out. This one, though, um, this one is, I don't know how to pronounce this, alpaca daufu or something. I thought this was something else, so I actually linked it in the show notes wrong. I need to correct it. Um, but there's the website. But this yarn is, uh, the alpacas are from a local farm. It is then spun at a mill, but then it comes back and is dyed by one of the owners of the farm. And this is a, uh, the color is uh, per persimmon. It's a dark purple, but it is 7 ounces, 500 yards. So I bought this because it was local to St. Louis. Um, when I asked for something local, she also pointed me to Diabolical Yarns, which I like Diabolical Yarns, but even though it's local to St. Louis, I can get it elsewhere. So I didn't know, I didn't get any of that. But I got those two items. So I have, um, then we went back to the hotel, um, just pretty much to drop off the car. And then we walked to a restaurant that Allison had recommended called Pie. It's Pie Pizzeria. And she referred to this one as Pie Max, which had me confused at first. And it's because it is in the Max movie theater. Um, and so we got a deep dish pizza. So, and let's see. I'm going to post pictures real quick. And then we finally got to the Da Vinci exhibit. Now, the I just had um, looked at Living Social before we left, a few days before we left, and just to see if there's anything interesting based out of St. Louis, and that's how I found out about this Da Vinci Machines exhibit. I'm not sure I would have known about it otherwise. Um, but I the deal on Living Social was a two-for-one. So the tickets were $14 each, but with the two-for-one, I paid $14 for both of them. So we went to the Da Vinci exhibit, and we were walking around at first, looking at the machines and reading the little the little blurbs. Um, There's a section on military and a section on flight, and um, I don't know what the other section was called. It was kind of, uh, it was machines, but it was more practical uses for machines. And then we, we were kind of looking around then we decided we would go to the back and uh, they said there was a 45 minute film about Da Vinci and we had just sat down there and the guy came back and said we're going to start a walking tour um, that should take about 25 minutes um, it actually took I think probably closer to 45 minutes but it was worth it um, the guy that was leading the walking tour actually travels with the exhibit um, so he knows his stuff. So he was stopping at some of the major items and telling uh, stories about them and stories about what was going on in Da Vinci's life. Um, uh, da Vinci was, uh, you know, was very poor. He didn't go to school at first. Um, but when he was about 13, 14, his father decided to send him to an, uh, to go be an apprentice. And... It turned out that he had tons of ideas, very good ideas. Um, eventually, he started doing military work as a way to make money so that then he could concentrate and do his fun stuff on the side, which for him was flight and artwork and things like that. Um, later, of course, artwork also became one of his big fun fundraising task, uh, projects. But some of the things we looked at, there was... Um, they were models of Da Vinci's design. So they would have uh, like a piece of his books with the design in them, an explanation about it, and then they'd have a small model built. Um, so there was a thing for like if enemies are going up 
ladders to storm your castle, there was a, a use of levers actually pushed the uh, the ladders away from the the castle. Um, there was a there was a ship that had a a hook on it that you get close to an enemy ship and you would drop the hook and it would rip their sails so they couldn't move anymore. And then there was another ship that actually could shoot. Um, I don't remember for sure how many things actually came to uh, fruition and how many were ideas. Um, but it seemed like a lot of them actually came to fruition eventually. Um, he didn't believe in war, so he actually built what they're calling the first robot. Of course, they didn't call it a robot back when it ha when he built it, but it was a it was a, a main man with a crank. You know, the one that was on demo would drum. Um, but he valued human life and didn't want to see it destroyed uh, when you know dukes and kings or whatever were arguing. So he really wanted to build a whole army of automated men. Now, since it ran by a crank, I don't really know how that would work, but whatever. There was also, also a tank that he built, um, or he designed. And one of the things we learned about that is that when he presented it to the king, I think, whoever it was that wanted the tank, when he presented it to them, they said they tried to use his designs and said, well, this doesn't work. And he said, oh, well, are you going to pay me for it? Because if you pay me for it, I'll tell you the last part of the design. So he was trying to protect himself and try not to have his designs all in one place. Um, I'm going to pause real quick and show some of the pictures of what I've been talking about. So, some of the other things they had was he designed a life preserver. Um, he designed a, uh, what would be like the equivalent of the beginning of hel a helicopter so that you could have vertical flight. He in, uh, invented ball bearings. Um, I took a picture of some of those. He had a hydraulic saw that not only did it use water to run it, but it also had a safety latch because he didn't want to see workers getting hurt. Um, I'm kind of looking at my pictures. And there was a lot of different um, elements. And then they were talking about how many of those elements, ball bearings, flywheels, uh, uh, worm screws, all these things are still a large part of how we do design today. Um, there was one story about a cart that they thought was uh, like the original car. Um, you kind of wind it up and it will go about 50 feet. But then it tips over and they could never quite figure out what was going on. It turns out that it was a gift for his last benefactor, but it was only part of the design. The rest of the design was to build a um, a top enclosure and eventually a, um, a lion's head. And what was supposed to happen, it was, it was supposed to travel a little bit and then stand up and shoot flowers out. It was supposed to be a thank you gift. Um, now that they found some more of the design, there are some people somewhere who are attempting to rebuild it in total now that they know what it really was and, and not a car. So that was the Da Vinci exhibit. Then we were really close to the stadium, and one of the things that Best Friend wanted is he really wanted to take pictures of the various 
statues along the uh, around the uh, Bush Stadium and get his picture taken with the um, the big famous statue Stan Mushil I might be pronouncing it wrong um, but we couldn't do that on game day because the crowds were too much well at this point even though there was a Sunday game they had long since left you know everybody had left so it was pretty empty so and it was only like two blocks from where the Da Vinci exhibit was. So we went down there and he got all his pictures. I took his picture next to the statue. So we did that. And then we walked back to the hotel. Um, and we had gotten tickets. Allison had said that if we were going to go to the Arch, we should buy tickets ahead of time. So we had tickets to go, to the, to go up in the St. Louis Arch, the Gateway Arch, at 8 o'clock at night. Um... We were really hoping to do a nighttime view and see everything. We had both been to the arch in the past, you know, you know, both of us years ago. But we thought it would be kind of cool to go up and see it at night. Um, the latest I could get was an eight, uh, was an eight ten, um, and they actually let us go up at eight because it was pretty empty. Um, so we went to the arch. And I had bought the tickets online ahead of time, which worked out fabulous. Um, it also meant we got a discount on parking, so we drove down there because at that point, I, it was a lot of walking this weekend, a lot more than normal. <laughs> so, um, went up in the arch. I got a good picture of the old, before I showed you the federal courthouse, but there's the old um, state courthouse and Bush Stadium, so it's kind of an overall view. And so I will post that. Um, but actually, once we got our pictures, it was like, okay, we've been in the arch. We looked down. Time to go. <laughs> we were both pretty exhausted by the end. Sunday ended up being a lot fuller than we expected. And then we were both kind of hungry, but not really. So we found a TGI Fridays that was open, and we split a meal, which was a good idea because we neither one of us was uh, super hungry. We just knew we wouldn't make it till morning. Um... The next morning, Sunday, we overslept. We both, we never set an alarm. We weren't expecting to sleep late. We hadn't slept late any day, but we ended up sleeping till almost 10. Um, and I had wanted to leave at 10. And then when we got up, we found out there was no water. Luckily, we had taken showers the night before, um, but we had to make a pit stop on the way back. So we ended up, we got to my my parents' house later than expected, but that was okay. I paid, uh, had dinner with my son, picked up the kitties, got home about 9 o'clock at night, which was much later than we had planned. We sort of, you know, futzed around and then went to bed and got up this morning. All right. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've been trying to avoid that. Um, that is everything today. So, I... I'm going to sign this off. I got to do a lot of posting and pictures. So who knows how long this will take. <laughs> I will see you guys all next week. Hopefully next week we'll be back on a on regular Monday recording schedule. Um, it is getting to be a little later. We're on summer hours at work. So we, uh, we work four nine-hour days and then take a half day on Friday. Um... But like today, I had a dentist appointment in the morning, so I ended up working way late. I ended up working till, um, I didn't get home until after 6, so, which is late. Hopefully that won't be the norm. It was, it was goofed up because of the dentist appointment. So, I will see you guys all next week. Bye now.